Hi, this is Brian Wormers with the University of Sioux Falls, and today I'm going to be talking about care of patients with infectious respiratory problems. Specifically, in this lecture, it's going to be talking about influenza and COVID-19. So here are some of our learning objectives in reviewing this. And then specifically, an overview of influenza. So this is a highly contagious viral infection that occurs at any age, from birth until geriatrics, uh, of course. Those that are immunocompromised, very young or very old, are extremely susceptible to it. Transmission of influenza is via droplet transmission. So with this, then with droplet, you are going to probably be wearing gowns, gloves, and masks. Symptoms would be a headache, myalgia, fatigue, fever, chills, and maybe even some runny nose. Uh, symptoms can persist for one to two weeks after the resolve of the true acute episode. So as we're talking about planning and implementation regarding influenza, some of the things that we're going to look for, um, try to identify those at risk and encourage pre prevention methods. Um, so that way they avoid getting sick altogether. So with this, early diagnostics is important. We can do vaccinations by injection, trying to reduce the spreading through hand hygiene and avoiding others and avoiding big crowds. If somebody is sick, treating with antiviral therapy. Now, antiviral therapy is a little different than antibacterial, um, and w w antibiotics, you know, once you get those within 24 to 48 hours, generally speaking, you feel better. With antivirals, generally speaking, it kind of shortens the, the time that you feel crummy by about 24 hours. So um, the other big benefit that the antivirals have is that it limits the spread a little bit more. And so... Um, it won't make them feel immediately better, but it will help prevent the spread to other people. And it'll, it'll shorten their duration by about a day or two. And of course, it's supportive care uh, with rest, increased PO intake, antipyretics, and analgesics with this. COVID-19. So I'm guessing all of you have heard about this one recently. Um, but once again, this is a highly contagious viral infection that can occur at any age, very similar to um, influenza, transmitted by a droplet once again. So you're seeing that. So the use of hand hygiene, washing, um, and immunizations are paramount with this, very similar to the influenza. Complications, they can lead to pneumonia and death, especially those that are immunocompromised, very young and very old, very similar to the influenza. Symptoms, headache, myalgia, fever, uh, chills, fatigue, cough, rhinorrhea, dyspnea, and tachypnea. So very similar to influenza. So what's our goal? You know, protect those at risk. Um, so once again, try to pick up on it early and try to prevent um, illness. So diagnostic testing is by um, swabs, and so we can do that just like we do in a very similar manner to influenza. We're trying to protect, protect people using vaccinations, good hand hygiene, wearing masks, avoiding crowds and other people. And then, of course, if somebody is sick with this, they might qualify for antiviral therapy. Supportive care is going to be very similar. So it's going to be rest, increased PO intake, antipyretics, and analgesics. If they're very sick for either of these, oxygen and, and ventilation um, may be required for influenza or COVID-19. So when I talk about uh, complications of this, um, and for influenza as well, but more commonly seen with COVID-19, we might see acute respiratory distress syndrome, sepsis, uh, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, clotting, bleeding, or having what we call long COVID. And that's, you know, altered concentration, insomnia, recurrent fever, shortness of breath, chronic cough, and fatigue. And so we're still studying this. We're still learning about all these side effects and, and the severity of COVID-19. Um, so more de details to come in the next couple of years. That concludes this aspect of it. Um, please click on the next link to listen to pneumonia and TV.